What's going on, everybody? My name is Mud, and I'm here with TCG Armory, and today we're going to be learning how to play Chronicles of Arcane. Chronicles of Arcane is a trading card game designed for about two to six players in which they use creatures, spells, artifacts to get at the other opponent and ultimately win the game. Now, in Chronicles of Arcane, we have five different essence types. Air, Water, Fire, Earth, and Void. In addition to the main five essences, you're going to find cards that have this grayed out symbol where they have their essence cost. You'll look up here in this upper right corner and you'll see that this is actually grayed out. And what that grayed out means is that it is a neutral card. Any neutral card can be paid with any essence type, whether it be fire, void, earth, water, air, or a combination. I could cast this to spell magic with a void and a fire, earth and a water, two airs, or a water, and if somehow I manage it, a neutral essence itself. Now, a neutral essence can be paid for by anything, but a neutral essence generated may only pay for a neutral cost. So we're getting ready to start our game. There's a few things that we need to do beforehand. The first thing we need to do is obviously select our deck. For this example, I'm going to be sticking with the Earth deck. It's a very good starter deck. I would easily recommend it. It's great to pick up, great for beginning players. So I've got this starter deck, Lion's Pride. The Ancient will be going here into my Ancient slot. Okay, next thing I wanna do is come over to my deck slot and that's where I will be putting my deck. A deck must be at least 40 cards with no maximum. Okay, so I've set up my deck. The next thing I need to do is set my life points. In a two player game, all player life points will be set to 25. In a game where you have three or more players, HP will instead be set to 30. All right, now that we've talked about setting up our board, let's talk about our board. On our board, we have a couple zones. This obviously is our ancient where, no brainer, the ancient goes. In here, we have front row and back row. This is where perpetual cards will be played. Well, what is a perpetual card? A perpetual card is any card that stays on the field once invoked. An example of this card could be a creature, an artifact, a token, whatever. Examples of cards that are not perpetuals would be a spell. A spell, if unless otherwise stated, once resolved, will in fact go to the Sanctum. What is the Sanctum? The Sanctum is where our creatures, all cards, go when resolved, when they die, or they're destroyed. When they're sent to the Abyss, it will be stated. The Abyss is considered outside your game. Whatever is in there is lost. On here, we have our Essence slot where we will be playing our essence. And up top, we have our domain slot. Now, domains are special cards that I will be going over in a future video because this video is simply just so we can learn the game. It is an introductory video on, hey, how do I play this game? So now let's just say that my board is in fact set up how I want it to be. There's a few things that come into play. So each player in the game will roll a die. Obviously, the higher number will go first. Ties will roll off to decide. Okay, so then now let's just say that it is decided that I will go first. Okay, so I'm going to be drawing seven cards. And for whatever reason, let's just say I don't like my hands. I can mulligan. Well, how do you mulligan in Chronicles of Arcane? The way you mulligan is you will take your hands, put it back into your deck. You will shuffle. You will still draw seven. However, you will then return one card to your deck for each time you've mulliganed. So for example, I've mulliganed once, so okay, I'm gonna be returning one card to my deck. Now let's just say that I've mulliganed twice. I still draw my seven, but then I will be returning two cards to my deck. So then like, oh, okay, let's just say I don't want Thorner or Jungle Stride Lion. Okay, cool, those go back to my deck. And so that's how mulligan works. We're gonna go first and demonstrate what that looks like. As a player going first, you will draw seven cards. 
In your hand, you will have your cards. I recommend you start with at least one or two essence in a hand. Now, this is ultimately up to player discretion. As you enter more games, you will find out what works for you and what makes you comfortable. I would be very comfortable with this hand because I know the cost of my cards are around two, three, or even lower than that. And I already am starting with one essence, so that means on my first turn, I will be invoking my one essence. You may invoke one essence per turn, and I'm already ready to bring some creatures out onto the field. So, okay, using my generated essence from my Tree of Life and exhausting my Earth Essence, I know that I can bring out Matriarch Lioness. Now, a creatures and artifacts are perpetual cards, and what this means is they stay out on the field once invoked. An example of a non-perpetual card would be this spell right here. Spells, unless otherwise stated, will go to the Sanctum once resolved. Okay, so I've paid my two, and I've got my Matriarch Lioness right here. Cool. Now, when I go to look at my card, I see that Matriarch Lioness does not have any traits. As seen right here, and here, in that bold lettering right under the type of card. Reach on Wood Elf Tracker, and Trap on Fight or Flight. So, the thing I would be looking for, and the reason I say that, is because there is a trait called Haste, in which a creature, when invoked, comes out unexhausted. However, since it does not have haste, once invoked, it will be exhausted. All right, so that's, that is that is how a turn would look as a player going first. Now, this is how play would look as a player going second. Uh, turn passes to me. I have um, my, my ancient art here. I've drawn my cards. I'm good with my hands. Now I'm going to draw my card. That draw is the only difference between starting first and starting second. The starting player will not draw at the start of their turn. The second player will draw at the start of their turn. Then going forward, at the beginning of your turn, you will always draw one card. So now we're a couple turns in, and we have a little bit of a board state going on. Okay, cool. So we have our two Matriarch Lioness in the front row, and our Ancestral Orchard in the back row. The reason you would want to put something in the back row as opposed to the front row simply comes from, do I want this protected or do I want to attack with this? And so my Ancestral Orchid, being an artifact, cannot attack or block, I would want that in the back row. And because of its effect and its ability to both give myself essence back and heal my creatures, I would definitely want to make sure that's taken care of. All right, so let's just do a simple scenario of what combat might look like. Right, we're gonna run through a couple simple combat scenarios that you might find in every match that you run in. So first couple things to notice in this battle is this creature right here, the Stormwing Falcon, does have Aerial. Aerial is a special trait that means it cannot be blocked or directly attacked by anything that does not have Aerial or Reach. We'll attack Reach in a second, but see, because it is, has Aerial, that means it's in the sky. Which means that this Matriarch Lioness can target this Cloud Shaper, the opponent, and because he's in the air, I can attack this Fossilized Lightning, utilizing what's known as the Pass-Through rules. Pass-Through dictates if this is not a vulnerable card, and all vulnerable means is that it can be targeted by the attacker, that I am allowed to pass through it to get to this target. So you can kind of think that anything with aerial is above the playing field, is just in the sky. So anything that's on the ground won't be able to hit it, unless it would have thematically something like a bow, or like Cloud Walker Mage, you just imagine she's shooting like some kind of wind scythe, or whatever you'd like to think, but in the air. So legally, I can't attack this fossilized lightning, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Because the Falcon is unexhausted, they still have the ability to block with that lion, or block the lion. And so let's just say that they don't want to do that, and they'll take the one hit on the Fossilized Lightning. That is how that combat would resolve. Now, I move into my second combat, because each combat is individual. I can then say, all right, well, this time I would like to uh, attack the Cloud Shaper. And it's like, okay. Um, this damage would be done at the same time, should it block. 
so they would both die. Now, if we read Matriarch Lioness, when Matriarch Lioness is destroyed, you create two feral 1-1 one, one lion tokens. And so you can do this any way you want. You can use anything to represent these tokens. I'm just going to do it like this for simplicity's sake. These lions then come in, and they come in exhausted. Now, that's two combats down for my turn. The next thing I might want to do is I see that this card has reach. Okay, so I can choose to attack this Cloudwalker Mage, this Fossilized Lightning, this Stormwing Falcon, or the player themselves. Because this is doing two damage with reach and I have something that is protecting me in front, I'm going to choose to attack the player. Now, the player, not wanting that direct two damage, will choose to block with the Stormwing Falcon and perfectly within their rights to do so. So they go and block with the Falcon. That Falcon takes two damage, okay? Because the attack happens at the same time, the Swoil Tracker takes one damage. So the one-off trigger will die. The last thing to resolve about that combat is we see here that its attack value is two, while the Stormwing Falcon's health was only one. So that means there's a difference of one. Any difference in damage, the rollover, will still return to that original target. Some of the opposing player will still end up taking one point of damage from this interaction. Now, I have attacked everything I can attack with, I've had creatures die, and I still, everything's exhausted, I can't be exhausted. Um, I could try to do the once per turn a heal and unexhaust an essence, but let's just say that I don't want to unexhaust any essence, and all of my creatures currently don't need health. So, it goes to the opposing player's turn. And let's just say now they're wanting revenge. So they will invoke Lightning Bolt, or they deal one damage to target creature, and it cannot be declared as a defender for the next attack. And let's just say that they want to do it on this Matriarch Lioness. And if that goes through, there's nothing I can do about it, or want to do about it, and then they come through with Arcane Bolt. Arcane Bolt says deal one damage to target creature or player, and if target is a player, draw a card. So they want to try to poke at this, and I don't want that to happen. So then I can come through with this neutral spell, the spell magic, and use it to try and counter that spell. Well, now we've got what's known as a resolution stack. And how resolution stacks work in Chronicles of Arcane is a first in, last out. So, we've got Arcane Bolt here that's saying, hey, I want to deal one damage to your Matriarch Lioness. It's like, well, okay, I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to counter target spell and send it to the Sanctum. Even because of this trap trait that it has. Trap means that it can be played out of sequence, out of turn, as long as resolution and priority is passing to you, which it was. So, they might have their own Dispel Magic in which they could just nope this Dispel Magic. So how this stack is currently playing out would be, I want to deal damage to you, I don't want you to deal damage to me, I'm going to make it happen anyways. And then, ultimately, this lion would die. Now let's say that they did not cast their Dispel Magic, and how this would resolve instead would be they go to target my Matriarch Lioness with the Arcane Bolt. I don't want it to go through, and it ends up not going through. Something I then could also do is, because this Lion already has damage on it, and I just, I don't think it's going to survive this turn. I don't think it's going to survive any attacks. I can't use it to block anyways. And I know its destroyed effects can make me two more guys. What I might end up doing is getting this fight or flight with the hope that I get the one through three option where I will force a combat between Cloudwalker Mage and Matriarch Lioness. And I can generate myself two more tokens. Or what I might want is to try and target Cloudwalker Mage with the 4 through 6, in which it will return target creature to its owner's hand. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about the different phases in the game and how to do combat, how to invoke things, when to invoke things. How do I win this game? Okay, so there's a few ways to win. The first way to win is obviously to um, completely 
set all opponents life force to zero you are the only one remaining with hp that is the first way to win another way to win is to do a force surrender a force surrender happens when i have completely run out of my deck i have no cards left in my deck and i have no cards in hands and nothing on the field in which i can block myself or by any means protect myself and the in that event where i can do nothing that is a forced surrender, and the opponent will win the game. Obviously, you can scoop or forfeits, but those are the three main ways you're going to win or lose in Chronicles of Arcane. So that's how you play Chronicles of Arcane. Now this by no means covers everything that will be in the rulebook, and I do heavily encourage you still read the rulebook. This is just designed as a video to be like, okay, well, how do I do this? Or what is a quick way I can do this? I will be making videos that describe each and every trait that we currently have in Arcane, and I will be going over things like domains, or some tips or tricks, recommendations with different combos, just simple things like that in later videos. In the video description of this video, you're going to find a couple links. The first link is going to be for the Chronicles of Arcane Patreon, in which you can go in and support the game and even get pre-starter cards that are going to be pretty exclusive. The, another link in the video is just going to be to the Chronicles of Arcane Play Network, in which you can go in and, for free, make an account and make decks, sample decks, see what other decks in the communities are being made. You can see other popular combos, things like that. Um, in Tabletop Workshop, you're going to find that there's going to be uh, a third link for the Chronicles of Arcane demo. And that'll include um, these starter decks in which you can play around with. It'll even have a way for you to import the decks that you make into uh, the Chronicles of Our Plane Play Network and just push it immediately into Tabletop Simulator. Lastly, the link you're going to find is a link to the Chronicles of Arcane Discord, where you can come in, say hi, meet fellow people that are wanting to play, and ultimately just be a part of the process and what's going on in the Chronicles of Arcane world. I hope to see you there, and I hope to see you next time.